On a dark night like this long time ago, a story took place that would stain the history books forever. In 1692, a scourge of evil in the form of children had purged the small town of Salem. A candle burned delicately in the corner of the bed of young Betty Paris. Mr. Paris sat on his knees, attempting to reach the Lord in favor of his daughter. The town of Salem was not unknown for its orthodox beliefs and practices. No novelists, no theater, no vain enjoyment, no holidays, so that the people may focus more on their practices. Her icy hands lay cold on the sides of the bed, limp much like his hands folded in prayer. The previous night, Mercy, Mary, Ruth, Abigail, Betty, and Tituba, Mr. Paris's slave, were caught dancing in the forest over a cauldron. They had danced and chanted strange tunes. Paris goes downstairs to talk to the people, acknowledging the dark magic in the town, with the help of Proctor. Abigail, when the others had left, threatened the girls to stay quiet or she'll murder them in their sleep. It was then when Betty woke up and began to scream. Abigail, upon seeing Proctor, a man of her fancy, confronts him and tells him that she will be waiting for him. He refuses her, denying anything they had done in the past. The affair had ended at the hands of Elizabeth, Proctor's wife. Proctor tells Abigail to forget him. Betty starts screaming when she hears music of God from downstairs. Through the commotion, Mr. Hale appears with heavy books, knowledge, and appeasement. He reasons with the dark arts, carrying its way through the people of each town, helping them to reach God. Revenge, guilt, sabotage, confession, and sin linger behind him. Abigail blames Tituba for everything after being cornered and questioned by Reverend Hale. Knowing she'll be hung, Tituba confesses her sins that the devil had come to Salem. The girls and Tituba began calling the names of others who had consorted with the devil, knowing confession and false blame would be their only savior. Proctor and his wife Elizabeth were having dinner at their home. Proctor was still oblivious to the mass accusations that were taking place in the town. He found out that their housekeeper, Mary Warren, went to Salem against his will. Elizabeth explained to Proctor that the situation in court and Mary Warren's role in the accusations, which is why she let her go. The court was fully convinced that Abigail and her friends were able to discern those that were affiliated with witchcraft. Both Elizabeth and Proctor were convinced the whole witchcraft business was a fraud. For this reason, Elizabeth proposed that Proctor and revealed the infidelity that he had as an attempt to discredit her. Mary Warren then walks in looking extremely ill. Proctor, seeing how feeble Mary was, told her to go to rest. Before going to bed, Mary gives Elizabeth a doll she had made in court and informs her that she had saved Elizabeth from Abigail's accusations. While Proctor and Elizabeth discuss the now 39 people that were accused, Reverend Hale walks in and questions Elizabeth and Proctor on their faith, which is when he states his suspicion towards Elizabeth. Giles and Francis enter to tell Proctor that Rebecca had been accused and taken to jail. The sheriff enters with a warrant to arrest Elizabeth for witchcraft. Turns out that Abigail had charged her. He searches the house for a doll. When he found the doll that Mary had made Elizabeth, the sheriff pulls out a needle from underneath the dress, then immediately arrests Elizabeth. Apparently, Abigail had been stabbed by the same needle earlier in the day. As Mary was questioned by the sheriff, she recalls Abigail was sitting beside her while she was making the doll and encouraged her to stick the needle inside to make it more durable. The trial for Martha Corey commenced. Outside the courtroom, Giles shouted in outrage as he valiantly struggled to defend his wife. Herrick pulls Giles into the courtroom, where Giles pleads for his wife's life. Proctor told Judge Hathorne that the rumors of witchcraft were false. Mary testifies that she, Abigail, and Betty were only pretending. Hathorne summons Abigail and Betty to court. Abigail denied Mary's claims. Mary maintains her assertion. Starting to be swayed by Proctor's stance, Hathorne pressures Abigail into telling the truth. It was then when Proctor confessed to his affair with Abigail. Hathorne brought Elizabeth into court and asked if his infidelity was true. Instead of speaking the truth, however, she lies for the purpose of preserving her husband's reputation. It was then when Abigail and Betty started screaming hysterically, claiming that Mary was sending her evil spirits towards them. Eventually, Mary broke down and started screaming with the girls, accusing Proctor of witchcraft calling him the devil's man. Three months later, it was finally the hanging day for those accused of witchcraft who chose not to confess. Paris explained that Hale was trying to get the prisoners to confess to their crimes as that was the only way to preserve their lives. He tries to convince the judge to postpone the hanging. 
Marshall Herrick entered with Elizabeth as an attempt to convince Proctor to confess his sins because that was the only way to prevent him from hanging with the others. Elizabeth tells John she wants him living. Hathorne and Danforth enter as well. Proctor lies and confesses that he had ties with the devil, but that was not enough for the court. With dissatisfaction, Danforth commanded Proctor to write his confession on a paper for the public to see. Danforth asks Proctor to give him more names to arrest as well. After hesitation, he signs the confession and then shreds it immediately. The ropes have been hung. The light of God was upon the town of Salem. The witch trials had ended in injustice where the guilty salvaged in triumph and innocent lay in the ground. <laughs>